day Africa and welcome to AAU Talks here on AAU TV and I am super excited today because we took our cameras off the studio and we decided to visit one of our members universities to find out what happens in the lives of the students, find out what happens in the lives of the lecturers and the entire university setup. And we're so fortunate and lucky to meet or to find one department which is so important in the setup of every university. And that is the Careers and Counseling Center of the University of Ghana. And if you just joined us, be informed that you can also join in the conversation by visiting our Facebook page, Association of African Universities, or you can join us via Twitter on AAU underscore 67. If you join us, you are live on AAU Talks and here on AAU TV. Um, after the commercial break, I'm going to introduce my guest and what we are going to discuss this morning. And I know you will not be in suspense because it's going to be rich content and you are going to pick one or two things to better your life as a student or someone who is aspiring to, to make a career choice or to make a career decision. My name is Chrissy Sam and I am your host for this segment. Viewers, welcome back and um, thank you for staying tuned on AAU Talks here on AAU TV. And like I said, we are streaming via uh, our Facebook page and then our Twitter page as well. We are privileged to have in our midst today the Director for the Careers and Counseling Centre of the Premier University of Ghana. And we are going to talk to Mrs. Jocelyn Bachman, who happens to be the Director of the, the Centre. Good day, madam. Good day to you, Kwesi. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you very much, and I believe you are good too. I'm good and I'm super excited because we are going to talk about one area that um, I have so much passion and interest in. And I hope you are ready to share with us. Certainly, ever ready. Great. So we took a leave of our studios to visit the University of Ghana, and one of the key departments that really caught our attention is the Careers and Counseling Centre. So we want to have a brief chat with you to share with us what happens here, um, what happens in the life of the student, the lecturers, and the entire university services uh, or the university community. But to set the ball rolling, um, you could tell us why the center in the first place. I believe that the center is very important to the life of a student, right from the time they come into the university. We, we have a system, what we call the student's journey. Okay. Before they are joining the university, they talk to us about what is available, what are the courses, what career options are available even within those courses. And when they arrive, for some of them, it's very quiet, it's very lonely. This is the first time they've moved away from home. Sure. How do they settle in? And some of them may have been offered courses that they didn't really choose. And so they are finding it difficult to settle in. And so they, they are also talking to us. And sometimes while they're here, they are also talking to us because at this point, they are looking at career choices, they are looking at course combinations, they are looking at academic work. Sometimes they are not performing the way they expected. So they need some support in studying skills or time management. So they come and talk to us. And also before they leave, again, what opportunities are out there? And um, they talk to us, we help them with placement, we help them prepare their CVs and uh, in preparing for interviews. We even offer them inter um, mock interviews if they want to. And so again, they're talking to us. And sometimes when they've left, they also come back to share, their experience. to share their experiences, yeah. to talk about careers, but also those who are looking for further studies. They come back talking to us, I'm looking for further studies. Some of the courses, if Legon is not offering, we may help them look elsewhere that might offer the courses. And so we offer programs and opportunities that helps them pick those up. We run an educational fair, for instance, okay. so they can come in and talk to people on different courses that they are interested in. Okay. First of all, let me congratulate you and then the entire university for placing much premium on, on counseling and career services for our students in higher education. We have some of our, our universities that do not have such setup, and even if they do, they don't place much emphasis on it. And so let me congratulate the entire university for this great stride. Thank but you. then, um, how long has the center been in existence? University of Ghana 
was established in 1948. Yes. So I want to believe that in 1948 the service was there. Oh no, 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 no. It was much later in the in 1970 the university saw the need oh. to set up the um, the center to help place students to prepare them to find uh, their own level when they leave school. And then with time they realized it wasn't just about placement, job placement, but they, some of them needed counseling, professional counseling. And so that was also added. And sometimes as they've come in, some are, as I mentioned earlier, some are struggling with academics and performance. And so they need a counselor to help them work their way through. So yes, it's been around since then, and um, it it's gone through different names. Sure. It was uh, the Guidance uh, Center, mm -hmm. and then it became the Counseling and Placement Center. Okay. And then in 2016, we got the permission to change the name to Careers and Counseling Center, mm -hmm. because we do more than just placement, it's a lot more activities right. that we offer. So it's now Careers and Counseling Center. So for how long have you been the director? Uh -huh. Since 2013, August 2013. That, that, that's, that's about five years. Yeah. Okay, and I believe you've done a lot of uh, good works in making sure that the centre is one of the best in, in the country and on the continent as well. I hope so because I believe it's an integral part of every student's life and so if we are able to support them in this way then the entire student experience is much more memorable mm -hmm. and the when they leave, they have good memories of the University of Ghana. They are willing to come back and support as alumni. They are also willing to maybe bring their children, their wards, um, people that matter to them back to the university because it plays such an important role in who they would be, you know, who they have become. If you've gone through your tertiary education here, for three, four years you're part of the university. It's prepared you for the world of work out there. And so it has to be something that would make you want to come back. And that's our, our main focus on getting them to be able to compete on the world out, in the world out there, but also willing to come back and contribute to other uh, services the university offers. Okay. Let me ask this because I find it much more interesting and relevant. Um, most often than not, you know, placement and career are part of the counselling services. But it looks like for your centre, you, you have really carved out and brought out the career um, to stand on its own, and then also the, the, the counselling centre as well. What informed this decision? Well, the counselling is about discussing options and helping the client realise what options are available and to make informed decisions and with the careers we chose careers over placement because placement is more restricted to maybe internships or job placements but we are preparing them not just with um, in the classroom but we offer them for instance volunteering programs so we have a project called transform my community where students are place in the deprived community to live there to see how that community can be transformed based on the knowledge they have from the classroom. This is not necessarily placement, it's a career, uh, it fits into their career, but yeah, career development, that's the one, but not necessarily placement. We have entrepreneurship programs, what we call the Enterprise Zone, where students um, are given, with entrepreneurial ideas, are given the opportunity to, to prepare their idea. And this is because we see it as an alternative career route. Mm -hmm. You might not be out there looking for a job, but this prepare, this helps you find a job. Um, this helps you actually create your own job and even employ others. Mm -hmm. And so that being um, for you to have your own job is not necessarily being placed. And um, if I may talk about this, this is one of our students, uh, um, that came out of our entrepreneurship challenge. It, um, this is processed coconut husk into charcoal tablets, yes. And so they, we did the entrepreneurship challenge called the Dare to Start Challenge, and they got this, and they have an investor now, uh, invested $80,000, and they are exporting this charcoal That's out great. of the country and in foreign currency. And so this is not necessarily placement, but they've got a business and they are employing other people to support them. So Reducing we the unemployment exactly the our main aim is to reduce the graduate unemployment in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And if we're able to prepare our students to contribute that way, we know very soon a lot more businesses will come up. And so we, we, most of them won't have to stay at home waiting for a job that probably is non existent. Okay, so how did you get the entire university buying into this transformation? Because in some um, countries and then in some universities, it is not that easy um, to have the entire university placing much more premium on careers and counseling services for students. 
How did you do it? It's not been easy, as you said, because uh, sometimes you have people um, get uh, being of the view that it's only important to teach them sure. and send them away. But we believe that if you're teaching them, they have to be able to fit in, to groom them, to groom them into the world uh, of work. And so fortunately at that time there was Professor Aite mm -hmm. and currently Professor Ebenezer Odru. Mm -hmm. These are uh, vice chancellors with a vision that see what we are doing and are willing to add their support and the registrar as well, which is Mrs. Hazel Isha. So they see what we are doing and they see the essence of these to the lives of our students. And so if you've got their support, then it's easy to rally the support of other members of the university to be able to run it. That doesn't mean everyone supports it, but we realize that um, most of the entire community <laughs> now sees the essence of this and so they are willing to work with us to help our students be able to compete in a competitive job market. Great. Um, Dr. Buck, let me ask you, who needs counselling? Who needs counselling? That's an interesting question. Sure. Everybody is my simple answer. Everybody in the sense that at any point in time, we are all faced with a challenge of decision making. Sure. And sometimes if you are in the situation, it's difficult for you to look beyond your problem mm -hmm. and see the various options that are available to you. And so when you talk to a professional counselor, they help you look at the various options available to you. And then you can make an informed decision based on the information available to you. So counselors don't necessarily advise you on what to do or tell you what to do, but they help you discuss or they help you view your various options and then you make a choice. And so everybody needs that at a point in time. Sometimes we get it from our friends, from our relatives, but if they are not professional counselors, sometimes their approach might not be what you actually need. They or they are actually telling you what to do, what to do but without even necessarily looking at the other options available to you. So it's important to talk to a professional counsellor who has been trained to help you make that decision. And so yes, every, we all need counselling at any point in time. That, that's beautiful. And looking at um, a setup like this in a university, you may have some kind of challenges, especially um, how readily are students available for counselling um, in terms of uh, confidentiality issues, in terms of privacy. How, how have you been able to manage it to make sure that the students readily come for counselling anytime, anywhere, and when they need it? Well, the challenge has been, it's probably more cultural than just our students. In our society, it's difficult for people to open up and share their problems. And I say this because a lot of the time when we have foreign students from the US, as soon as they arrive, they will report themselves and say, um, I have this condition, I've been diagnosed with this condition, I'm on this medication, I need this kind of uh, support, maybe psychotherapy or medication when it needs to be prescribed. They bring themselves. And so we see the cultural difference here. But whereas our students, some of them are even receiving medication from outside, but they don't want the university to know because they are afraid of being stigmatized. But the university is actually very sympathetic towards you, know, you if you let us know your condition and then we can uh, bring in all the support and the advocacy that you need. So what we say is um, it's difficult for people to open up, but those that open up and those that access our services they realize it's help, it helps them with, the, um, with their stay on campus because if we need, for instance, to make a concession, the investor needs to make a concession for you based on your peculiar condition, we are able to um, write a letter, a report on your condition. Of course, taking out the details of it, but letting the investor know that this person needs such and such a support and so the university is then willing to work with you and so it's important for the students to let us know because if they keep it to themselves and the time comes when they need this support we do not have any history on them we do not have any information on them so we cannot make a case a strong case on their behalf and that's why we're saying even if you receiving help outside it's important for us to know so that if it means discussing with your halls with your course or with your department, with the academic affairs, for them to give you the needed support, then you have a strong case uh, on which to go by. In fact, you make a very significant point where our cultural backgrounds kind of inhibit or limit us in sharing our, our problem. And I would want to believe that University of Ghana has over more than 18,000 students on campus. 40,000. 40, How many visit the counseling center a year? 
in a year, well, because we are into the careers and counselling centre, then um, it will be difficult to limit it just to the, uh, the, the counselling side. But the centre, we may, because not everyone is on campus actually, at the centre we may get up to 20,000. A lot of them looking at um, career opportunities and internship opportunities, job placement. But in terms of counselling, I think we, we looked at, uh, we tried to do a chart out of it and probably about 7,000 okay. in and in out a in a year, okay. but some are coming in probably once, some are consistently seeing a, a, a clinical psychologist or some um, counsellor, okay. or some are also, we also have a psychiatrist that comes in once a, a week okay. on Wednesdays, so sometimes they are re students are referred to see the psychiatrist. And so all these, when we put it together, we're looking at around 7,000 every year, okay. which is not that, uh, big but i think it's quite significant for our Very students to realize yeah. that yeah it's, 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 it's really important good. to come and get help sometimes it might be just about the course you're doing or your academic performance mm -hmm. or um, your relationship with your roommates even with your parents with your significant other same-sex relationship opposite sex relationships but i think the lecture student relationships. lecture student relationship is also there and other university authorities you know your relationship with other university authorities and sometimes it's been said that students come for counseling only when they have a broken heart <laughs> yes and that <laughs> sounds funny yes it, it's just a misconception sure. in that um when it's only broken hearts that will make you need help mm -hmm. if you're not getting the grades you want how do you get out of it? Sometimes we have counselors that will, education counselors that will help you maybe develop a time management uh, system that will help you make the most of your time or studying skills because sometimes maybe you're studying but you're not absorbing because you're using the wrong the skills. Wrong so yes, they offer you some skills on that as well to help you make the most of the grades. And your course selection, for instance, the combination, which career path are you looking at? So what course combination do you need to help you meet that career objective? So yes, we offer various services and students gradually are seeing the essence of this and they're coming in more. You are doing amazingly well, amazingly well, because I have visited some um, campuses, especially the Counseling Service Center, and I know you are doing a great job. But how did you make it? It's, it's something that we need to get out of you because it looks like there is something that maybe other universities may not have gotten. Because um, when you go to the University of Cape Coast, for instance, it is um, the Counseling Services Centre. So we kind of place value on all. But here it looks like placing much more value on their career services. Students are free to walk in because they wouldn't go through any stigma that I have broken heart. Did that, has that worked for you? Yeah, that certainly worked for us and that is what informed the change of name. For okay. instance, okay. we had to rebrand the centre for mm -hmm. students to see it as a career centre okay. or student support centre. That was actually the name we wanted, student support services. Okay. But we realised that it might clash with other names, other units of the university. Okay. Like the dean of, the dean of students. Exactly, the dean of students office. Mm -hmm. That was the main uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. So we kept it at this. But it want, we wanted to it to be a comprehensive support service so that when students come in it could be for anything and if you need help with career and sometimes they talk to us and they actually need financial aid so we refer them to the student financial aid office for instance so they are coming in for counseling but the main problem behind the counseling is the financial aid they need so we refer them so it's um we say that it's not been easy but it's just because when we started charting the student's journey it's a cycle that we charted and we realized that at various points, what are their needs and how can we help them? So we put ourselves in the center of the student's journey and so that at any point in time, we can offer them support in the various areas. So that's how come then the center became more of an all encompassing center because we are charting their journey with them throughout the four years or two years, or however long they're going to be here. And through that, if you're able to work with them, you're able to know what their needs are and how best you can support them at any point in time. Okay. So do you have the lecturers also coming in for, for services? Do you have the, their dependents coming in if they have any Yes, Yes, the centre is here for the students. It's actually for the entire university community, so that includes the students, the staff, and their dependents. A lot more of the staff bring in their dependents rather than themselves. But those staff that still want to check themselves in, we usually see them outside hours so that they are not 
sitting around waiting with students. Okay. So we offer them out, out of office uh, service, out of our services, yes. But uh, they're allowed to bring their, uh, their children in. Mm -hmm. They're allowed to bring themselves in if they need the help, yes. And then, of course, the students are allowed to walk in any time. So then it means you do some kind of outreaches um, outside the university community? Yes, we do outreach. We have the SHS outreach okay. because we realized that people were coming in and they didn't have a clue about some of the courses available and the opportunities within them. them so we need to take it to them there. So we run an SHS outreach program once a year where we target uh, uh, senior high schools and their counselors in the school counselors and we talk to them about career planning that if you're able to start planning from that stage then there's less frustrations when you get to this stage so we have that and then we also have um, the um, outreach we sort of partner with little groups we have the volunteering there are some groups that will go out there to help people with reading for instance or mentoring JHS students for instance so our students are on a program uh, where they mentor JHS students and this Apart from help building the students themselves, it also gives back to the community. So the community sees that we are also offering them, giving back to them because we know that, you know, they are giving to us. We also have to give something back to them. And so we run those. And there's another one on age concern where um, there's one group that we've partnered with that looks at um, the elderly. And the, it was a group of social work students who you know, came up with this idea, so we partnered with them. And so we gave the elderly the support and we ran sort of seminars and training programs, some kind of forum for people to understand the needs of the elderly and how they might be supported. So we'll take a very quick commercial break and when we come back, we'll be looking at, um, we'll zero our discussion into more of the careers and what you do with the students and for the entire university um, settings as well. If you just joined us, um, I, I promise you nothing but the best because we are streaming live from the director's office and that is the director for careers and counseling center of the premier university in Ghana, University of Ghana. And I hope that you've been enjoying the discussion um, throughout. If you just joined in, we are telling you to just log on to our Facebook page and then our Twitter handle and then you can send us your comment, your feedback on the topic that we are discussing. Counseling is for everybody and it plays a significant role in the life of a student and the entire university services. Earlier I was discussing with Doc, um, uh, Mrs. Bachman how the, the center has really gone through a lot of um, all the process of change and where they have gotten now. And it's amazing that they are doing so much to support the student and the entire university as well. So Doc, let me come back to you and I know that is the area where you place much more emphasis and. I can see the expression on your face that you're happy when you're talking about the career services. <laughs> so what do you do for, for the, the student um, on a semester basis in a year? What goes on um, with your career services that you provide for the student? Okay, maybe I'll just talk in broad terms so we do at the center, if that's Great. okay. All right. So we have the main counseling service. We, we have professional counselors okay. and we have peer counselors. All right. So the peer counselors are students we train mm. And we, they're out there in the departments and in the halls. And so when we train them, student, we put their information out there. Mm. Their numbers on posters and things. So students can call them if they don't want to talk to okay. a professional counselor. Okay. And then in terms of, um, we also have the placement service. We have the um, um, employability hub. Mm. We call it eHub for short. And basically that prepares our students. So we have the training side. Okay. Every semester we have 10 sessions that okay. students can sign up for prepares them for skills like CV writing, interviewing skills, communication, okay. um, problem solving, decision making, uh, negotiation, communication, teamwork. The things that employers are looking for, yeah. we train them. So it's 10 sessions. Yeah. And then once we've trained them and we've prepared them, these are the people that we put forward when employers are looking for okay. interns or job placements. And so it might be for national service, it might be for a full-time job if you've graduated already or for internship opportunity. Okay. Because we know that now they understand the workplace and some of the skills that will be required okay. for them in the workplace. So does that mean that when um, a company needs or an industry needs students or they need workers, they, they come to you 
to seek advice and then you provide them with the, the quality student that you have? Yes, certainly. Some okay. of them come to us, but most of them we approach. All right. And so, and some of them are already partners mm. in various uh, uh, projects that we work on. Okay. So we approach them and so if they have needs, they will let us know. Mm -hmm. So for instance, we run a career fair, mm -hmm. in, usually in February, March of every year, in preparation towards the summer holidays. And so employers will come in for three days, they'll be meeting our students one-on-one, -on -one, talking to them, engaging them, and they get to pick mm -hmm. the best of our students that they want, whether for internship in the summer holidays or for national service placements. Okay. Or those who've already graduated, then if they are looking for a job, they might get a job placement out mm -hmm. of that. Okay. So we run that as employability hub. Mm. And then we have the Transform My Community Project, as okay. I talked about. That's a volunteering, volunteering project. Right. So that also prepares them for the world of work because it gives them skills that are needed, the team working skills and the decision making and problem solving. Mm. If you're in a community, what are their problems and how can you help solve some of these problems? Mm. They come up with recommendations, they come up with solutions as to how we might transform those communities. Okay. So what, what has been the success rate for the career services that you provided, the uh, career fairs? Um, what has been the success rate? Can you give us evidence of students who have been directly been employed? Oh yes, last, last year for instance we placed close to a thousand students okay. in different positions. Mm. That's from the center and this doesn't include those that went on their own, mm -hmm. but that's from the center. But of course there are a number of students over another six or seven thousand that came to us requesting right. for let, introductory letters so right. that they might find their own placement. Mm -hmm. And based on that we get feedback because as part of the letter we give a form, a mm -hmm. feedback form, where you, uh, the employer is supposed to give us feedback mm -hmm. on the student's performance okay. and out of that we're able to then when you return we'll talk to you and say probably you didn't score so well in this area maybe an initiative so how might you prepare yourself next time you're going into the world of work mm -hmm. and so we, we we discuss that with that uh, students on that mm -hmm. and as part of our training then we knew we know we need to stress on initiative for instance That's exciting. so we take the information back and we try to work it into the next set of training and so when we place with students as um, with employers as well for instance they might say give us 20 of your best in uh, social sciences mm -hmm. they might pick 10 so we're asking them why you pick these 10 and not the other 10 and sometimes the feedback they will tell us maybe they they, this one the, exactly the, so we okay. prepare the next lot for the next time that is going so we are constantly engaging them mm -hmm. finding out what they're doing what is happening out there and how we might get our students to compete because we want to ma maintain our position of being the best in West Africa. <laughs> Not just exactly. in Ghana but in exactly. the whole of West Africa and exactly. we want to become probably the best in Africa as well. And so, that's possible. Yes, it's a lot of work the, we have to work work do. Doing. But okay, so if a student walks into you um, for career services or for career advice, what are the things you take them through? What do you share with them? Um, basically when they walk in um, they want to know maybe they don't know what career choices they make we have mm. options we have the training like I said okay. so it's a 10-week session you can register each semester oh. but we also have like an employability timeline so what what level are you in mm -hmm. what are your courses what are your areas that your interest areas and some of them are not sure which career path they want to choose mm -hmm. we have a resident psychometrician okay so she will take you through an assessment psychometric assessment like personality which, test, personality and, test, which okay. combines your personality and your interests oh, and good. your ability to see which areas that you thrive in mm. and what we say is we warn that it doesn't mean you won't do you you can't take any other job it just recommends the jobs that will come naturally to mm -hmm. you that will help you do well in exactly. because it comes naturally to you mm. but if you want to pursue other areas certainly yes you can it just means you need to develop more skills in maybe a b and c mm -hmm. for you to be able to to thrive in whatever you choose mm -hmm. so out of the assessment we'll give you advice okay. that if you look at these areas it, it tends to be more natural mm -hmm. so if you're at this level you need to follow maybe a, B, and C, C to be able to get to that. Okay. And for some of the courses, we find that maybe they are not even being run in the University of Ghana or mm -hmm. being run in Ghana as a whole. Okay. Then we start looking at other areas mm -hmm. outside of Ghana where you might get some of those courses. Okay. So at that point, yes, the student has an idea of where they want to be and how they're going to get there. And that's how come the educational fair came in. Okay. So that we invite other universities, universities. from outside of Ghana okay. that offer courses that we don't. Mm -hmm 
maybe with scholarship opportunity if possible, mm -hmm. if even without, then at least the students are aware that these courses are available, are available. elsewhere. Okay. If I want to pursue them, then I know where to go. Yeah. So during your career fairs, how easily do you get the companies, the institutions partnering with you? Because I know it's a difficult terrain. It and you, you may have a lot of stories to share with us. Yes, we have a, a lot of stories and the reason being sometimes when you approach companies, mm. uh, they're expecting it to run for free. Okay. And I, I will have to say to them that we are a public institution. We will not get funding to run a career fair. Mm. But we need, we need to run it because we want to give you an opportunity to see our best students. And, and we want a student for them, yes. you, actually. So we want you to make an input. So mm. some the sponsors, so people, we get them to sponsor, mm. or you can just register. If you just register, you just get the stand. But if you sponsor, depending on your level of sponsorship, you get to address the students. Mm -hmm. Of course, it comes with other benefits. So in your address to students, you tell them what you have mm -hmm. as a company, what are your expectations, what are your requirements, what are your products and services that the students might want to patronize. Mm -hmm. And so that helps them, um, helps us as well to get them to commit because they realize that, well, we might get the youth mm -hmm. that are now coming up, if we can grab them early and groom them to suit our corporate culture, mm -hmm. then we've got you know people for the future. So a lot of the companies uh, that invest in talent hunting, mm -hmm. they are willing to work with us on and those. And they always get the best. And they always get the best because mm -hmm. when you're here, you get to meet them. Mm -hmm. And if you feel you, you still haven't got enough, we can still get you more. Okay. Because the investment is that big. I exactly. mean, even if they don't appear at the fair, we can still speak to the departments mm. and get the, get you more. So what we do is we screen them. Okay. If you ask us directly, sometimes they want to do it on their own. Right. We allow them to, but if you ask us to do that for you, we'll screen them, mm. shortlist, and maybe if you want five or 10 or 20, we shortlist and then give it. And it's worked very well for companies like MTN, for mm -hmm. Barclays, for Airtel, you know, we've worked with them over the last few years okay. at the career fairs. So the, and they, the brand is always, always yes, there. Yes, and the students know about them, and they're always asking, what is Barclays offering now? Mm -hmm. What is uh, MTN offering? You know, in last semester, for instance, MTN took about 50. Okay. Barclays took about 100, mm. and I think Etel took 10 or so. And it carries on. There are quite a number of other companies. Um, if you can see, we had over 30 companies in our That's career what, fair. Okay. And so all these companies are looking to place students. Nothing but the best. That, Why does not it, come does to the premier university? Please, some kind of pressure on you to always give nothing but the best. Well, it does place pressure, but we are happy to do that because mm. we want Ghana to realize that we were the best. Sure. So we we also want to put our best foot forward. It helps with also our brand, mm -hmm. and I'm very interested in the UG brand. Okay. So. I want to make sure that we present the best so mm -hmm. that when the story is being told, it's very positive. Mm -hmm. And it means companies are also more willing to come back the following year to mm -hmm. ask for more. Mm -hmm. If you don't give them the best, then they lose faith. It means next year when you're talking come. to them, they're not But have interested. you ever gotten any negative feedback from the companies based on the student that they, they picked? Usually the ones that we presented, like we said, we'll screen mm. them. Okay. We take them through the interviewing, the mock interview, and then we do the selection. selection okay. So usually we get positives for right. those. Mm. But students might have gone on their own, that mm -hmm. we had nothing to do with mm -hmm. them. So they might say, oh, they are University of Ghana students. Mm. But those are ones that probably haven't been prepared. prepared okay. They haven't got any clue about workplace ethics. So they might come and sit there and be on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They might come and sit there and be WhatsApping. But the ones that we've prepared, we let them know it's not allowed in the workplace mm -hmm. to go and sit there and be on okay. Facebook, for instance. So yes, you might get a few of those where they went directly. Okay. But the ones that we place, we make sure that we give you the best. So I Nothing don't think we've had much complaints, okay. apart from probably the fact that some of them don't have the confidence sure. that is expected in the workplace. Mm. But there again, I think that is more, it cuts across. But I think uh, even so with that, that, you know, industry has a role to play mm -hmm. in, in preparing the student because Certainly. we are preparing them for, for industry. Yes. So I think that one should even be a problem for, for you because it is their responsibility to also make sure that they, they groom them when they come there yes. to up them up to the level of maybe confidence that they want. Yes, and I would say that the courses are just usually mm. giving them the technical skills. Sure. You as a, an employer will need to train them on your specifics, exactly. on your corporate culture. Mm -hmm. A person might have a degree in banking and finance, for instance. You might employ them. But your uh, particular um, 
trading skills mm -hmm. that are required, we will expect you to, sure. uh, to groom them on. Mm -hmm. But as much as possible, we want students that can go in mm -hmm. and contribute. And that's why we request that Corporate Ghana works with us okay. so that we, we are preparing them for you. Mm -hmm. So we want you to work with us so that we will make your work probably easier mm -hmm. because we worked with you already to prepare them while they were here. So when we release them out to you, to a large extent, they are able to fit in and contribute because you contributed in their grooming. Okay. And that's why we probably at your platform might send this message out. We are asking Corporate Ghana to help us okay. groom our students for them. Okay. We cannot do it alone because we are not exactly sure what they your requirements mean, are. Exactly. But if you let us know what your requirements are, what the trend is mm -hmm. in your sector, in your industry out there, let us work on it so mm -hmm. that we can prepare them for it. So in a way, this is kind of addressing the skill mismatch. I won't country. call it mismatch, maybe a gap. A skills okay. gap because mm -hmm. there's a gap uh, sometimes where the transition is from yes. academia into industry. industry. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might not be exactly smooth because okay. of the requirements of the various industries. Mm -hmm. So if a student is being trained, usually they're being trained to contribute. Mm -hmm. But if you pick them, you need to do a bit of work on them mm -hmm. to fit your specific industry mm -hmm. or to fit your, fit your specific uh, sector. Okay. And that's, that's what we're talking about. Great. So what has been your major challenge as, as a center? And what do you seek to achieve in the next five years? Um, as a, the major challenge as a center, I'll look at two things. The first mm -hmm. one is uh, financial. Okay. Because all these programs we run, uh, because again, we're a public institution, the government has made available funds for, for these. So sure. we have to go out there soliciting funding. And so that takes away some of the time that we could use mm. to do other things. Okay. And uh, sometimes maybe you might not readily get somebody to support mm -hmm. and to sponsor. Mm -hmm. And so it puts a strain. And the second thing is about space. Mm -hmm. And so probably going forward, my biggest uh, wish is to have a bigger center. center. That's, that's, it. that's great. A much more encompassing center with training mm -hmm. uh, rooms and seminar rooms. Therapeutic rooms. Room. Therapeutic rooms mm -hmm. so that when students come in, it's like a big hub sure. where you can have all these services and there's enough room, maybe even a student area where they can come in and sit and do some work or read or work on the computers, you know, and do their research. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be a, um, a library or anything, but just a center big enough, to like a, um, a lot of programs that mm -hmm. we run. That's, our that's training program, our entrepreneurship program, we want an incubation center, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. So if that big center we have has an incubation center, students who are working on some of these projects can come in and work on their um, I think this is a projects. very beautiful vision and I, I know it's possible to I achieve. hope someone will build one for uh, us. Yes, That's maybe, our dream for uh, the next five years. And that is possible <laughs> if we closely work together on sure. this. I know it will be possible. That would be great. You have the entire continent. Tell whoever you want to build a centre for you. I think there are some very good uh, companies out there, mm. not just in Ghana, but out there sure. that have the resources mm -hmm. to help us out. And it will be good for them to you know, work with us and help us build on that. Yeah. I think that the university, um, the university has a good brand mm -hmm. and so we can be trusted, we have the credibility. Mm -hmm. And if there are companies out there who are looking to give back to their community to invest and they are not sure where the investment can go, we're looking for a building mm -hmm. that supports a student. So like a student hub where all our support services will be involved, including our entrepreneurship center. We are also looking for an enterprise fund. We've started uh, promoting an enterprise fund. Mm. And so we want to develop an enterprise fund so that when students come with brilliant ideas such as this, they can draw on the fund and run the business. With that, I think that's the biggest way we can reduce graduate unemployment mm. because if they have the business, they're able to employ themselves and able to employ some of their mates mm. or some of the other people with less skills. And gradually, this helps take a lot more pressure of the already existing jobs because there aren't that many available. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. What will be your final words to a student who has never visited the center? A student who has never visited the center, the, our tagline at the center is your smart choice. Okay. And so what we're saying is, if you're going through the university for four years and not speaking to the careers and counseling center, you are not being smart about your choices. Mm. The reason being that um, if you even you have everything figured out, it helps sometimes to speak to the professionals. Mm. So it confirms what you've decided. Mm. It will help you 
put uh, the necessary structures in place for you to achieve those career objectives that you set for yourself. Do speak to us and I'm sure you'll be glad you did. So thank you so much um, you. Mrs. Bachman for opening your center to us and then we know that uh, anytime working you would gladly receive us yeah, and share with us something. All right, so thank you and we are so much appreciative. Earlier we had a wonderful discussion with the director of the Career and Counseling Center of the University of Ghana, Ghana's premier university, where we were looking at the basic things that happens here at the center, what was the rationale for setting up the center, and what has been the benefit student and the entire university has derived from this center. And we had a very interesting discussions, and for us to also know how the students have, have, have been experiencing services or counseling services in the Premier University, it is important that we have one or two people who would give us their first-hand information and their first-hand experience of the counseling um, and services center here at the Premier University. And I have two wonderful students who are going to share their experience when they first got to know of the center, how their experience has been, and what they have to tell the entire continent. So the first with me is Augustina. Augustina, how are you? Fine, thank you. Are you in, your, in the final year, first year? I'm in the final year. What program are you reading? Psychology. Psychology. Is that why you, you love coming to the center? Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. So who introduced the center to you? I found out on my own. I saw a flyer lying around and then I got interested in the services they provide. Okay. And so when you got in, how was their reception like? Were you received well? Um, yeah. tell, us, tell us your experience. Feel free and share with us. I was received so well that I like to usually come here, maybe after my class, before mm -hmm. I go to my hall. I come here and then talk to them. Okay. So what do you come here to do? I just come to see the work they do and then get interested in like, the things that are going on. So what do they do and what makes it exciting for you to visit after every lecture where you can go back to your bed and sleep? Oh, I just like the counseling services especially. Mm -hmm. They interact with students and help them with their problems. Okay, so what was your first problem you brought to counseling? Actually, I didn't bring any problem okay. yeah, because of my course. The interest is just there. So. Okay, so why did you come? I came because of um, the excitement that it gives, helping people to solve their problems. So eventually I became a peer counsellor. A peer counsellor, oh interesting. Where you also have the opportunity to kind of support your mates who have um, counselling needs. Yes. Okay, so how many students patronise the centre? Oh, a lot of students. And, and some of them know about the centre through like most of us because we work here. So if they have problems, they usually get in touch with us so that we can contact the centre on their behalf. Okay, so um, Dr. Um, Mrs. Bachman, um, earlier in an interview with her, told us that they run career services um, where industries or companies come in and they also provide internships for students where students come in for internship letters and, and others. Are you a beneficiary of any of them? Yes. Which of them? The career fair. I was there and then I, I sent my CV to some of the companies. I got a call from them. Which, which company specifically? Uh, Star Life Assurance. Okay, so you did your internship there? No, I didn't accept the offer. Why? Uh, because there were other interesting offers around. Like. Okay, so per your experience or you visiting the centre, you got to have a lot of options. Yes. And then you made a choice of which one was the best for you. Gersina shared with us her perspective of how the center has been beneficial to, to her. What is your experience? Um, mine has been very wonderful as a student of the University of Ghana. I'm currently in my level 400, okay. uh, my final year. Mm -hmm. And I've been with the center since level 200, volunteering and uh, working with the center. Okay. And one of the things that the center has helped me with is formulating a career goal. Okay. Um, and it's offered me opportunities to work at various companies as well. Because after school, you go to look for a job and the first thing they ask you is, how many years of experience, experience. do you have? Okay. And I just finished school, so how am I going to get all of those experiences? So working with the center, I was able to work at all those companies, get those skills the companies look out for. And I've enriched my CV through all of that. So what about your friends who, I believe you didn't come here to serve as in, um, seek for the service alone, you came with your friends. Yeah. So can you share with us what has been happening to them also? Yes. What would be their testimony should we get the opportunity to interview them? 
Oh yes, they'll tell you the same thing. Okay. The Careers and Counseling Centre always is the link between our students and industry. Okay. And so whenever there's opportunity for us to go work or companies come around to look for students to come work with them, um, the Careers and Counseling Centre is the first place they come to okay. and they have been helped in that, in that manner. Also, there's the counselling um, service offered well. by the Careers and Counselling Centre. And so colleagues who are having issues with their studies and any, any issue at all can come to the centre. We have wonderful um, counsellors here who are very down to earth and very open. And we speak to them like our own friends and they help us a lot, okay. whatever. So to you, what do you think is the basic perception? Why are students not so much kind of interested in going for counselling? or seeking for professional help when they really do um, need, they need such services? Yeah, I think it's the misconception they have mm -hmm. and, and the tag they, they tend to yeah, have the from, stigma. the stigma from, from, from their colleagues that, oh, okay, so Emmanuel is going to the Careers and Counseling Centre because he has an he issue, has. broken heart <laughs> and all of that. But the centre does more than just that. Mm -hmm. And the issues are not just about broken hearts. Okay. You do not know where you want to go after school. You don't know what career path to pursue. And so there are counsellors here, there are wonderful people here who can help you formulate all those goals, know where you want to be in the next five years, what you want to do with your life and all of that. And so I would advise them that the benefits of coming to the Careers and Counseling Centre far outweighs the, the, the perception and the stigma attached to that. And so they should actually forget all of that and come to the centre and be helped. Okay. If, so what would be your final words to all the students of the University of Ghana and then across the continent um, who also kind of are shy patronising the services of, of, of the counselling centre in their institutions and in your institution to be specific? What advice would you give them? Okay, so I'll share a personal experience I have now. Okay. I mean, my final year, I have to do my service after school mm -hmm. and currently I have so many options on my hand now oh, okay. and I just have to choose okay. while others are going to struggle or not know where to go and through the careers and counseling center I'm at the state now and so there's so many benefits my friends you can derive from from actually coming to the careers and counseling center okay. not just um, internship letters you come for to look for companies and all of that but the network you can have with the people at the careers and counseling center with industry the programs they organize to help us develop ourselves get interview skills negotiation skills and all of that are necessary in the working field and you can't get all of that in the lecture theaters we are in and so we have to make sure we use the careers and counseling center very well to our benefit while we are here mr afi you are welcome thank you okay so um you share with us what has been the transformational process ever since you you were brought into the center as a staff yeah, I've, I've worked there for quite some time now. Mm. I've worked with about three or four directors. Okay. For some time now, the centre used to emphasize a lot on counselling okay. because, I mean, initially it was set up as a career ad advisory centre. Mm. But some or other, they brought a the counselling. But after some time, it looked like the counselling seemed to have overshadowed the, the, the career, career, services. Center, career mm. services. And that was a good aspect in, in bringing Mrs. Backman in. Mm. I mean, because she came to strengthen the careers and careers uh, aspect of the careers and counselling centre. Okay. And, and I think the mandate of the university is to bring out employable, employable students. Mm -hmm. and, and that one, I think she's doing very well at it. Okay. So how um, has student benefited from, from the services of the centre well, the past the, five years? Well, they have. They have benefited a lot. I mean, if you look at the transformation in their careers, mm. in the career development program, the leadership uh, academy, and the counseling aspect, I mm. think students have benefited. I also realize that the publicity of the, of the center has gone quite high, and mm -hmm. students patronize more, not only for counseling or for careers. Something they come because they want us to look at their CVs okay. and their application letters. To you, what is the perception? Why a student feeling reluctant to seek for services here? Well, um, it depends on the type of services they are looking out for. Okay. If they are looking for attachment letters, they are not reluctant you're coming to come. You're coming yes. numbers. When they are looking for, I mean, counseling has got a, sign, a, sen a sense of stigmatization. Stigma. Okay. So many people do not want to come. But that's why you don't, that's why the centre was put here. I mean, um, you know, it's a little bit away from Yes, yeah, yes. so that people could sneak in and take advantage of the services. So what would be your final words to students who may not have ever vis visited the, the centre? Well, I think there's a great loss if they don't visit the centre. Everybody who has visited the centre and has used the service of the centre has uh, commended the centre for what he's doing. Okay. So if, uh, most students say they don't know about the centre, but I don't mm -hmm. think that, that that's the truth. Okay. At least they come for um, attachment letters. So mm -hmm. They know what the centre does okay. and we encourage all students to come and use the services of the centre.
today I, I promise you nothing but the best and so thank you so much Dr. Mrs. Um, Bachman who has taken us through what happens here at the Careers and Counseling Services um, Center of the University of Ghana, I mean the premier university of, of Ghana. And so if you join us, thank you so much. And then we know that we'll meet you again where we'll bring you other important segment of this university. It could be the, the registry, it could be where the main admissions go on. You want to know the kind of programs, courses that are being run um, by the University of, of Ghana. We will just bring you nothing but the best.